Yeah. Right, so uh, yeah, my name is Ben Murray Robertson. Uh, I'm an enterprise architect from Anglia Water. I've been working at Anglia Water since 1997. Uh, most of my career has been in telemetry, what we now call operational technology. And, and data center management around that area. But for about the last five years, I've been working in an enterprise architecture role. Um, but really, honestly, it's really been about the last year that it's really felt that we've made that push into real enterprise architecture, whereas before we were very sort of technical architect focused. So yeah, like I say, in the, in the last year, we've really sort of pushed towards that true role. Uh, and I want to talk today about our architecture journey our approach to how we've handled uh, Archimate and biz design and how we're looking and are tackling some of the business architecture challenges we have. Uh, just a little bit about Anglian Water. Um, we are we cover the Anglian region, which is the east side of the United Kingdom, if, if, if you know that. We have approximately over 6 million customers and we actually have a lot of unique challenges in our region. Uh, for one, we're the driest uh, region in, in the UK. We're also very flat, so that actually gives us a unique set of challenges. We can't rely on gravity to move water around the, the region. Uh, we're also one of the fastest growing areas of the, of the country, so there's a lot of unique challenges there around our geographical location. And we have about approximately 5,000 employees. And we work with many partners in what we call alliances. Uh, we're also a very highly respected water company in the UK. We've ranked top three in the past 13, uh, we've ranked, sorry, top three in 13 of the past 18 years, and we've been number one for seven of those years. Uh, we're also regulated through Ofwat, and our funding is basically over five year periods, and the latest five year period started this April. Uh, we have these what's known as outcome delivery incentives, which are reward and penalties, and we're basically measured against how we meet our performance targets, or what they call performance commitments. Um, so that gives us quite a large challenge as well. And there's also, because of the type of industry we're in, that we're regulated, there's a large emphasis on us that we, we ensure that we spend the money appropriately on the right areas, and that we're able to pivot into the right areas to meet our targets and our, our commitments. Uh, so now I just want to talk through a little, little bit about our journey into enterprise architecture, why we needed to change the way we operate and how we're currently achieving this. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, originally enterprise architecture was fairly basic. We, we really focused on design reviews, infrastructure projects, and a lot, a lot of tactical work. And we weren't really being pushed out there, getting out into the business, really understanding the challenges. And we, we actually spent a lot of time producing one-off views of architectures in many different formats, whether that's PowerPoint, Visio, whatever. There was no consistency. It was all done differently each time. It was all very disposable. We'd spend, you know, weeks creating a view that we'd put into a presentation and never really seen again, or we'd create these very complex views that quickly went out of date, hard to keep up with, uh, and it causes real challenges. So what we wanted to look at, we wanted to sort of re realign ourselves and restructure ourselves closer to the business uh, and improve many of the aspects of how we work and operate. Um, and a big part of that was getting close to the business and understanding some of its challenges. And you know, obviously, our, one of our key roles as EA is we wanted to improve our strategy execution to make sure that the programs and projects that we were delivering really did align to the needs of the business. So yeah, that's why we needed to do something. So this is just an example of actually some of the manual views that we did create. Uh, and as I said, they were you know a nightmare to either create, manage, keep up to date. Uh, and also due to the way we were structured, there was no real consistency. We worked, you know, architecture was very spread across different areas. There was um, no real consistency and no common language. So different partners and different architects were all using different terminology, languages. It was, it was quite hard to keep, keep a track of and keep going. So we then looked at, we did a procurement piece. We, we, we looked at what we wanted. Uh, we went out and we chose Archimate as our language and Biz Design as our platform. Obviously, I probably wouldn't be here. Um, we've had Biz Design now 
for around two years. Initially, the first probably six months or so, quite slow for us in that we were learning the capabilities, sort of developing the skills, um, engaging with different stakeholders, trying to understand what some of their concerns that we could address were, and, and, and trying to implement such a change into the organization is never easy, especially the way that we were structured before and the way we operated, it did make it a little bit challenging. So say so the first six months were a little bit slow, um, but, but we quickly then picked, started to pick up the pace. So we've been now working on populating the system. Uh, the first thing we did is we, we took a core set of architects, uh, whether they're you know, some platform architects, data architects, enterprise, we basically went off and got trained. We, we learned business design, we learned Archimate, we took the foundation and practitioner uh, certifications so that we really understand what we're trying to do. And then we all sat down and we built a, basically a core meta model we really wanted biz design not to just be for lots of one-off little things, but actually to have a core model that we could use, reusability. So we built this core model, meta, meta model, that we felt actually could address some of the core concerns that we had. Uh, and then we then we built went into a sprint-based approach to the population. So we basically have a roadmap document listing out all of the sprints that we plan to do. And in there, we'd kind of capture what views we need to create, what elements we're going to need to populate, where that data is going to come from, how we're going to do it, uh, what the estimates of time were. We would actually see this roadmap of activities, and each deliverable at the end of each of them. And one of the benefits of doing it this way is actually then we could kind of rejig that plan and restructure it. So actually, we were you know, doing small pieces of work, getting value for it, moving on to the next piece of work, next piece of work, at each stage getting delivering value to the business rather than just trying to tackle, you know, something big and scary up front, taking a long time and not actually, you know, delivering value for a long time. So we, we started um, we started with the application layer because a lot of us, we work in IS. It was easier for us. It's sort of more information in the world that we knew. So we started there. We started populating our applications. Uh, we brought them all into this design. We cleaned them up. We've actually added something like 50 attributes, depending on the application, across a whole range of types from service delivery, operational sort of information about tickets raised. Uh, customer satisfaction or user satisfaction of the application. And that really enabled us quite quickly to then have a series of views that actually we could showcase to business with heat maps. So now we can come along and heat map, you know, show me the most popular apps in the business or et cetera. So, so we started it there. We're now currently working on the technology layers. Uh, and also we've been doing some a little bit in the business layer. The motivation layer was fairly straightforward for us. So we're a little bit all over the place in terms of the layers of where we're actually where our spins are. But really, application layer is mostly done. Technology is our, what we're currently working on now. And it's mostly all in. We just need to uh, look at how we're going to do some of the cloud and some of the sort of more interesting areas of our, of our landscape. Um, and, and actually, during this, when we have started to look at the business layer, we realized actually business and strategy layers are quite difficult. We, we, where we thought we would have information, uh, it was actually quite hard to source or it wasn't consistent. So I'll get onto that in a little bit, but we, you know, we realized it wasn't that straightforward. So the other big thing that we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that this was going to be an evergreen, that you know, as we're building this, it's not just going to be a point in time that we could keep all of this up to date. So first thing we did is we set up an editorial board, monthly meeting, core Archimate modelers. We can set the governance for the platform, set the standards. We can also review change and produce roadmaps. And actually we've got a mechanism in there where we can track new objects as they're coming into the platform and make sure they're approved right. So that's a really useful forum for us to really control what's in this design, how we're gonna how we keep it maintained, keep it going forward. Uh, we also then have a catalogue of elements for Every element type, you know, whether that's application, application service, business process, we actually have a catalog and we record information about that, as in where do we source the information from? How are we going to refresh it? When are we going to refresh it? Who's responsible? Who, who's the owner of this? 
where you know where is certain information may be mastered in business design, not much. Most of it's going to come from the original sources. All of that's kept in this catalog, which really then helps us build into that roadmap of when we need to refresh data. Uh, and then the next step we did is really we've embedded it into our processes. So that was quite key for us, you know, to keep it evergreen. We obviously, we can't just keep doing it. We can't be expected to know everything that's happening out there. So it's embedded through from investment board reviews. Now we actually embedded it into our process. We get engaged very early with the business and start capturing the elements, you know, if a project gets formed, it's created in the elements created in biz design, and then we start linking it through to the various layers as we need to. And that follows all the way through now through our PMI program management office, uh, through their quality gates. So as it's going through its high level, detail level design, et cetera, we're adding more and more layers and detail to our application as it, as it goes through. Uh, and then things like our technical design authority, which is sort of our review board for designs, you know, we've now stipulated that you know, if a project or anyone needs to come in and talk, we well, are talking Archimate, that's our common language across, our, um, across the business for architecture. And that's worked really well. You know, it's really started to clear up now. We're all starting to talk the same language and there's not the kind of confusion when someone says capability, are they talking about business capability or a technical capability? So, so it's really starting to, you know, really starting to help. Um, so just a couple of views here of some of the portals that we've created. We've, there's, we've actually got a lot, quite a few more than this, but just some examples is actually Horizon is really good for being able to showcase out to the business what we've done, uh, either if even that's internal. So the ones at the top left is more for us architects, really to just to see what core elements and views have we got in there. But you know we're actually creating business portals, um, team-based portals, you can see sort of more towards the bottom left. So they've been really well received and they're starting, actually these portals are starting to deliver value through to the business. So it's actually, that's looking really good. Uh, another view I just want to show is, you know, I mentioned we started with applications. One of our earliest focuses was to, how do we make viewing our what applications we have easier? Because there was too much of people looking in a spreadsheet seeing a huge list of applications, excuse me, and not, not being able to kind of get any context of what type of application they are. One of the early areas we created was this view, and it's actually gone down very well, seems to work. Um, and what we're now looking at is for some of the bigger application services, clicking on some of these will take you to a second page that breaks them down even into more detail. For example, fluid modeling will then go into what type of fluid modeling, is it real time or computational? Or, so we're, we're looking at that as the next step, but ju just having this just, just makes you know, managing and tracking what applications we have a lot easier. Um, yeah, moving on. Um, I don't need to dwell on this one too much, but I just want to stress that whilst we are creating a number of views, you know, it's key to us that we do use as much out of the box functionality as we can. And I do love that every element does have its own page. So again, just looking at a GIS service, I can easily see, you know, all, all of the relations that, um, it has assigned, what different views that that's used in. So just these out of the box views are, are really, really nice. And they're, you know, they're really starting to showcase all, all of the kind of work that we put into business design. Uh, and uh, I won't dwell on this one either. This, this is really just to show, we, you know, it's not just about putting the elements in, but we are actively using business design to really start mapping out what our applications are, what some of our processes are. I mean, typical sort of horizon views uh, or Archimate views, I'm sure you've seen these before, but yeah, just, just wanted to show off some of these. Uh, and then we got to our business layer. So really we started looking at our business layer and we quickly realized that there's not a single source to get this information. There's, you know, if we actually looked at what our, our business capabilities, there were several different views floating around, uh, you know, quite different levels and different business units seemed to have their own interpretation of what it was. There wasn't a single place that you would go and say, okay, that's where I go to to see where our, what our business capabilities are. So, we took the best from all of them. We created this view that you can see now. Uh, we're currently in the process of going through it with some of our business colleagues, getting it complete, approved. 
Um, the nice thing as well is each of the capabilities does have the description behind it. So actually, you can actually see what it does and then in layman's terms really kind of explains what that process is. Um, and that's gone down really well. And actually that's really kind of also helped push um, business design and horizon as okay, that's the place we go to to see our business capabilities. Um, actually, you know, in hindsight, this view actually is a really important one for us to get right because it, it turns out everybody understands this view. They can all look at it, you know, to, to, doesn't matter who I go to in the business, they can look at it and see where their world is within this view. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's a key one for us. And also, it's going to be a view where actually we can generate a lot of heat maps and, you know, start different journeys off through through this view. So it's quite, a, quite an important one for us. Um, so because of some of the problems I've said about the, the um, business layer, you know, it's not just around the business capabilities. When we looked at business processes or what our business functions are, very, very different levels of standards and quality across the business. And there wasn't, you know, that just that one place we could go to. So in order to really help that, we've done, created a professional community or what we're calling the architecture community. And I'm just going to talk through that now. So this first slide is really just to showcase actually the center of excellence is what we would really consider the core people that are working on biz design, populating all the information. Uh, mainly the architects, uh, and we call it a centre of excellence. It's not, you know, Angry Water has a lot of centre of excellences, or some centre of excellences. Um, this isn't a formal one, but we're following the same model that they take. And really for us, that's about, it's a virtual team. They don't all have to sit in the same physical team, building. They can be different people in different roles across the business, all working together. And they're the core input as architects of uh, this design. And then following on from that, we then created an architecture community. And this community really is about bringing in a wider audience of people so we can share knowledge, experience, have a safe place for people to practice, explore, develop their skills. Uh, we, we have, you know, again, Andy Water has several communities, um, one that's within science and technical, analytics, innovation, you know, there's a list of these communities we have, and they've actually been very successful. So they've gone down very well. So we took that model again, we actually created a community. Now, how are we actually building it? So the first thing we did is we had a launch event, which happened in February, so perfect time. Uh, we managed to get 80 of our colleagues from across the business. We actually initially had a larger number than that, but we decided to sort of start it reasonably small and then see where we wanted to go. Uh, some of these were technical people from, you know, with an IS or projects, but actually a lot were, you know, didn't really see themselves as an architect. But, you know, when they, at the end of this launch event, they really saw that actually there is value in us all working together. Um, you know, in the actual day was a mix of some internal talks, external talks, and we had some mini workshops to really start addressing, you know, understanding what are some of the business architectural concerns that we wanted to address. Uh, it went down really well. It really highlighted architecture isn't just something that IT does. That, you know, and, and actually, if we if we all work together and everyone can do a little bit, they can get a lot more out of it. That's really the the beauty of what we're trying to achieve here is you know having a common place for reusability enabling us to collaborate well actually if you did your business processes in the same tool we don't need to understand what all the applications are because we've got all those linked already all the business capabilities so actually by us all working together we'll get more out of it uh, as i said it went down really well it's changed people's mindsets and actually really it was a Big turning point, I think, for us in in sort of adoption and understanding of what you know, Archimate is, biz design, and how we want to operate within architecture. Uh, and then following on from that, we've set up a uh, community steering group, and this is about really how do we shape the community going forwards. We didn't want to just control it and dictate to the community what happens. So we actually took volunteers on the day, people to come in from different areas of the business, and help us shape that roadmap. Um, and that's, we've had a couple of sessions of that. We've started to build a roadmap and everything else you can see on this list, you know, there are sessions that we have planned to be at further events, but they're now all going to be virtual events coming up in the next 
well, between now and the end of the year. And that's, you know, whether we're exploring some architecture disciplines, you know, people want to understand what is business architecture, what are we doing about it, have a session for that. What others are doing, you know, other, other architects in other industries or other big companies, how are they operating? Um, and we also, we set up a business architecture working group as well. So this is really about getting some key people in the business to really understand and want to drive how we operate within our business architecture. To really, you know, people that, there's a lot of people out there doing process modeling, but they're doing it for different reasons and they're not really using this tool because they didn't know it existed. So this business architecture working group is about bringing all the right people together um, to enable that collaboration and really get a handle on how we're operating and working within the business architecture. Uh, and then we're going to set up some business architecture engagement sessions and hackathons, you know, really to take a common architectural concern that we've identified, bring the right people in and see if we can create a view, you know, in a mini hackathon or something. Uh, so that's what we're doing there. And then lastly, just want to quickly cover on, you know, how, how COVID has changed the way we work. There has now been an emphasis from the business to really start looking at you know, our physical locations. Because actually that later we pretty much said, well, we're not really going to look at that you know, a year ago. But actually now that's quite key, quite key to the business. And they really want to understand how people work, where they work, what technology is available, where they work. Um, so actually, and then suddenly, well, we've got a tool for that. So we're now starting to work with the business to want to start mapping out what our physical locations are and what the IT that supports that and what business processes are used in those physical locations. As I mentioned, many of the events are now going to be virtual, but, but really because of the way we work and because we do have these virtual teams that we do collaborate uh, through technology, actually a lot of this um, building of the data set, population, the works is really business as usual for us. So yeah, that's, that's the end for me. Uh, thank you very much for listening and I'll pass back to uh, Nick. Thanks, Ben. And we've had quite a few questions coming in uh, during the talk, so I'm, I'm going to do my best to navigate them and, and kind of pull together overlapping questions. Um, so one of the uh, questions we had was, um, how difficult was it to get the support required for the required investment from executive level? And, and how did you manage expectations? Um, wasn't easy, if I'm honest. We, we had an architectural tool before, um, really, I, you know, it's, it's a lot of conversation I had to have, a really a lot of selling it to key stakeholders in the business, building that business case. Um, and also, to be fair, we started quite small. So, you know, we didn't go out and say, well, we're going to need, you know, hundreds of licenses. Started quite small. So actually, we could build that model, show, you know, start showing some value back to the business. And then, you know, when the second year came along, we needed to increase the licenses we had. It was an easier conversation. That business case was easier because they've seen the value that we've delivered. Great, thank you. Um, uh, the next question is, um, did you restrict your use of, of Archimate to a, to a subset of the concepts or did you use, you know, 100% of, of what's available? And, and then there's a, a follow on question, which is, uh, you know, how did you dis go about deciding what's in or what out, what's out of that subset in your core meta model uh, and, and where the various bits of data get mastered? Yeah, cool. So, yes, we did. So originally we sat down and we looked at when we said earlier, we, we created this original meta model. We, we, we looked at actually, you know, what, what are we going to need? The, the problem I found is early on is it was really hard to get everybody's architectural concerns and I think if you're going into this you really want to list out what are the sort of top 10 20 architectural concerns that you want this tool to address and not from yourself but from your director senior um, IT or business people um, and we didn't have that so we kind of took the best of what we thought um, we built this model and as I say yeah we did limit it you know like I said earlier we, we did exclude it initially well we're not going to need the um, physical layer we didn't see the value in that so we built this original core model that we thought actually this will address x y and z but then as we go through a sprint based process each sprint could say well actually now for this view i am going to need physical so we then 
document that, we create a mini model and put it in that documentation. So, so this view is actually composed of these elements, this data, and here's how we built the view. And then we append that back into the main meta model. Uh, what was the second part of the question? Um, so, so how did you decide about um, you know what was in and what was out? And I think you, you've answered yeah. that in, in terms of response to the views. Uh, and then uh, how, how did you d decide where the various bits of data get mastered? Um, yeah, so we, this is where we have the editorial board because that's a great mechanism for us all to sit around the table and discuss that. So for example, I'm gonna need to get roles and teams into this design because we, we need that to support X, Y, and Z. So we can sit down, we can all work together. Where are we gonna get that from? We've got work day, are we gonna get it from here or there? And so actually the editorial board was really good to actually, you know, what elements are we going to use? That's where we kind of keep the catalog of what elements we're using, where they're sourced from. And then, yeah, we, 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 um, yeah, editorial board. So you yeah, have a, have a forum where you can sit down and discuss that and track what you're currently doing. Because what we really wanted to do is control it. We didn't just want people going in there, throwing all sorts of information in, um, and another thing we've done is we've actually created attributes against many of the elements so we can track where they came from. So actually, if I do choose just to put an application into business design, I manually create it, it wasn't sourced from any other system, I've just thrown it in there, will we see that? And then through the editorial board, we can choose to approve things, and reject things. So that, that's a reasonably new piece for us with the attributes and managing it that way. But we did feel it was important, not because in many cases, the information isn't just going to come from one source. So we wanted to understand, you know, was it important as part of a project, part of a bulk import? And, and then we have the catalog view that tells us what the refresh, et cetera, will be. And then we have a mechanism, as I say, that we can review in the editorial board what new elements have appeared in the last, since, since the last meeting. Okay, great. Um, so I've, I've got two questions that I think we can combine uh, here, which is, um, did you use out of the box biz design visualization, visualizations or did you customize? And, and there was another question on uh, how did you create the, the application services view? Um, we use out the box where we can. We, I don't think we've done, we've done, I don't think we've done any views using custom reporting or code in, in, in an enterprise studio. Most of it is out the box, but what we what we tend to do is layer graphics around them and over them. So that, excuse me, that application services view, really it's just, it's just links to the various uh, application services put on a nice pretty, with a nice pretty image in its background to show the relationships between them. So, yeah, I mean, our, our rule, we'll try and keep it as simple as we can. If we can use out-of-the-box views, great. If we do need to embellish them, make them look a little bit more business-friendly, we'll try and do the minimum to that, but we'll try and avoid, where possible, doing really complex views if, if there's an easier way. Okay, great. Um, uh, another question, uh, which reference architecture model did you use to, to create uh, the, uh, the, the business capability map, uh, if, if indeed you did use a, a reference model? Um, I couldn't point to which one because I think we, we as I said, we, we started by pulling together what we already had. We then looked at it and thought, more well, that doesn't look right. We then found a few references the um, you know sort of industry ones that we, we looked at really, really it's a real mix um, like when we originally put it all together well it was all still shaped around business units and areas of the business and we thought well, actually you know true capabilities should be sort of agnostic to that so we brought it back a level so, so there, there wasn't really one reference that we could kind of point to and say it came from there um, it was it was a mix of several Okay, uh, and, and probably the final question that I'm for um, is, is a, a bit of a combination question again. Um, how did you manage to convince uh, the business users to start using an EA tool? And I think a related question is, um, you know, how did you go about getting this embedded in 
the, the kind of business as usual processes of the organization. So if I start with, so um, how do we get the business to use it? Well, still happening. Um, there are obviously certain people that do have an interest in seeing it. So we have, for example, our digital partners. And actually, if we can give them a view of these are the apps that are in your business units world, well, actually, great, it's a value to them and they want to start seeing that information. So we're, we're, it's, it's an ongoing because, you know, adoption isn't massive if we're talking about 